verse 8 says the following this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth but you shall meditate in it day and night and you will that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it and then you will make your way prosperous somebody say your way, your way. Prosperous. prosperous and then you will have good success someone say good success we don't want any kind of success we want good success we don't want success that you have to keep a gun under your pillow but one success that you constantly have to you know fight with attorneys and constantly go you know lawsuits and everything that is good success somebody say good success do you want good success and this is what God promises to us and I want to speak to us briefly on this topic make your way prosperous make your way prosperous a statistic says that on the average a person by the age of their 40 they will have about eight jobs 43% uh, of people living in the United States who work actually enjoy their work. The rest of 67% uh, do not like their work. That's why if you go on Twitter or any other place on Monday you will always find Monday motivation. That's why most suicides happen on Monday and people's happiness increases by 10% on Friday. All has to do with work. A lot of people do not enjoy their work. Some people see work as a four-letter word. It is a four-letter word but some people see it the other way and most people's dream and desire is is to have this paradise and our view of paradise is an endless vacation it's when you do nothing but that is not really the paradise God created us for in the beginning when God created man he placed a man and he gave him a job and job is not a curse we know that the curse came after that and so job is a blessing of God but the, there is a difference between having a job where you work very hard and you barely get anything and having a job where you work and you see the blessing of God. And so we see from this verse a few simple keys that God gives to us how to prosper in the area of our work and in the area of our finances. The first one is what the scripture says is let this book of the lot not depart from your mouth. That means that you have to you have to watch what you confess and so you can write this in your notes is that you will possess what you confess it means whatever you say you're gonna have an English uh, dictionary or an English uh, language has 800,000 words an average person knows about 10,000 words and we use only about five if you're a journalist you know about 15 to 20 thousand and use about 10 and so all the words are there that we have in our vocabulary we can use those words to build our finances or we can use those words to destroy them I know that most people in our culture today believe that it's the education that makes you successful God's word says it's your mouth everything starts with your mouth it's very interesting that out of the ten commandments the third commandment that God gives us was the only commandment that God attached a curse to it he said if we break the third commandment we bring a curse upon our life and you'll be surprised to find out that the third commandment has to do with cursing when you curse God says you draw a curse on your life and not only on your life on the life of your children so that means when you get up and you curse your job you curse your money or you curse yourself and you don't have to swear to curse you don't have to throw f-bombs to curse you can simply get up and say I'm worthless, I'm no good, nothing ever good works out for me, I'll never amount, I'll never win, my company will never succeed, I never have job, nobody's hiring, I don't have education and that is a form of cursing your finances. You are gonna attract like a magnet curse into your finances by cursing your finances. But there is also people who don't just say negative things about their finances and their job but they actually have a problem with profanity. And the average, an average man in the United States knows 20, uh, 58 uh, cuss words. A woman, 29. Some women I know, they know more than men. <laughs> was it the one that was laughing the loudest or no? Many times people ask, what's wrong with cursing? What's wrong with cussing? What's wrong with throwing, you know, a few F-bombs there and there? What's wrong with, you know, when you go out and something happens and you just literally vomit all of that junk out? You have to understand, every curse word is a curse on your life. That's why I can't afford to send my money into damnation. Why? Because the devil's going there. I don't want my money to be damned. I don't want my health to be under damnation. You don't want to throw curse in the area you're working so hard to make it prosper. 
Many people destroy with their mouth what they build with their hands. They're working so hard to build their career and they open their mouth when somebody cuts them off on the highway, when somebody gives them a bad day and they curse the whole life. Destroy with their mouth what they build with their hands. Don't destroy with your mouth what you're trying to build with your hands. And so God says if you want to have a prosperous career, if you want to have a prosperous life, if you want to have a success in your finances, watch your mouth. I'm always in debt. You know, and somebody always gets promoted. You know, things just don't work out for me. You got to get that out of your life. You got to get those kind of words out of your vocabulary. Can somebody say amen? amen? So sometimes if you have nothing positive to say, well zip the lip. Muzzle them out. Tame your tongue. Amen? It's interesting that out of your body, mouth is one of those things that has the capability of closing. Ears don't close. You know why God allowed the closing mechanism in your mouth? If you have nothing positive to say, shut it. Can somebody say amen? The second aspect and here the Lord teaches us is He says that you meditate in it day and night. So not only the Lord wants us to in the area of our finances, in the area of career to watch what we speak but God, God also wants us to get rid of stinking thinking, to get rid of negative thinking, to get rid of pessimistic thinking and we all can have bad thoughts circling in our mind once in a while but it's the thoughts that stay it's the dominant thoughts it's like that in book of Genesis what it says that God said to the earth and he says I'm going to take my spirit he said my spirit will not strive with man forever because men were living forever and God says men are not going to live forever because and this is why he says because every intent of their heart is evil he says all of their thoughts is continuously set on evil so God is sees that every always and continually the thoughts every always and continually when God saw every always and continually thoughts that are every always and continually these are the thoughts that determine your life it's not the thoughts that you have when you get a promotion it's not the thoughts that you get when finally you know that person likes your status it's not the thoughts that you get when you get a gift. It's the thoughts that every, always and continually that determine how close the Holy Spirit will work with you. And because God didn't want to remove the Holy Spirit, what He did is instead of living, allowing us to live for 900 years and poking the Holy Spirit with our thoughts, He shortened our days to 120. We didn't improve, He shortened it to 70. Holy Spirit cannot put up too long with our negative, dominant, pessimistic, I'm worthless, I'm poor, nothing ever works for me, I was born in the wrong side of the tracks, why is this happening? Holy Spirit does not like those thoughts. Amen. Sometimes we think it's what we pray that really matters. It's the kind of prayers we offer to God that's going to bring a miracle into our life, especially in the era of our finances. But it's not always the case. There was one woman who was struggling for 12 years with an issue of blood. She had a consistent bleeding, you know, girls have uh, or women have uh, periods and, and they have, you know, flow of blood and, and but this woman, that blood never stopped and she went to all kinds of doctors for 12 years. She, she really wasted a lot of money and you can imagine for 12 years having a problem going from one doctor to another, you know, you can be mental a little bit, a little bit hit, a little bit overwhelmed, a little bit heavy and then she hears about Jesus, she decides to give Jesus a try. And it's interesting that if you meet people who struggle so long and so hard, they pay such a heavy price and they never got help, you will find one thing about people like that is they're tired. And they will tell you that they're tired. You will see it in their mouth, you will see it in their words, you will see it in their eyes. And they're just exhausted. But this woman had a different attitude inside. The Bible says that on inside she said to herself, if I touch Jesus, I'm going to be made whole. She didn't say, I hope he's going to be better than the doctor before. She didn't say, you know what, I'm just sick and tired of this and you know, I'm just sick and tired of going from a doctor to a doctor and I hope Jesus is better. She simply, something inside of her ignored all the 12 years of trying and failing and says, if I touch him, by the way, I don't have to touch him. If I touch his clothes, the clothes that pick up dust on the ground, if I touch that, she said that to herself. After 12 years of disappointment, there was something inside of her that was still alive, passive, uh, just passionate and positive and the Bible says that when she touched him without even asking him for a miracle Jesus's power just released. God's power does not have a password. It's like a public wi-fi. Anybody can tap into it. You don't even have to sometimes pray. Just think right. It's not the right prayers. It's the right thoughts that sometimes place a demand on the power of God. 
Sometimes we think if I just say precious Lord Jesus God Almighty the creator of galaxies the universe off on the Omega beginning that is not really it's what's inside of your box it's after 12 years of maybe never having success in your finances you've never seen that in your life what is cooking up what do you tell to yourself when you are by yourself what do you speak that no one else can hear it's that that puts a demand on the power of God to start working in the area of your finances and your job Bible says meditate day and night that doesn't mean that you have to quote the scriptures in your mind this means your thought pattern dominant thoughts have to be filled with miracles possibilities positive everything will work out God is on my side he will help me I know I'm going I know that's all I've known but listen God is bigger than that he will help me I will get through I mean I live in America I have to succeed you have to tell whatever you have to tell to yourself without speaking that's positive uplifting and encouraging amen you can't have a positive finances if you have negative thoughts and number three is that we see Joshua was told that he has to do what God says and that is simple application brings transformation application brings transformation when we apply what the word of God teaches about our finances about our job we experience transformation in our life it was Dave Ramsey who said that 80% of financial success is behavior, 20% is knowledge. It's very good to read books, it's very good to go to seminars, it's very good to hear lessons and messages on tithing. But I'm going to tell you one thing, listening to it and never putting it to practice will never change anything in your life. You have to begin to apply the things that you hear. Sometimes it's better to hear less and apply more than to hear more and apply nothing. So what are the things that we apply as Christians? And you already heard word tithe. You're like, what a tithe, tithe, tithe. Word tithe is 10. That means that as Christians, we tithe. As, well, why do we tithe? Because we put God first. Now, if you don't tithe, you end up tipping. Tipping and tithing is a little bit different. You usually tip after you eat the meal based on how good the waiter was to you. Right? You don't tithe based on that. What you do with tithing is that you give to God before you get the meal. Because He's already provided the meal and you're trusting Him to bless the rest. With tipping, you always tip whatever you want, a dollar or two. With tithing, we give specific percentage and we keep that consistent. With tipping, you give to a waiter. With tithing, you give to a creator. Can somebody say amen? And a lot of people what they do to church when they come to church and, and I know a lot of people do that they come in and they just kind of throw a dollar throw a five like oh I have extra and so and they treat God as a waiter and then you no know, amazing no interesting that God treats them back like a waiter don't treat God like a waiter treat him like your creator honor him do you have to tie to go to heaven no but if you want to prosper you want to honor God in your life as a Christian you have to be a person who tithes you don't have to just like God doesn't have to bless you financially to get you to heaven he can get you to heaven just by barely getting you through but we want his blessing salvation is free but we want to see God's blessing we begin to live by God's standards and God's blessings amen the second thing we learn about uh, after we tithe is that we go into offering now offering is anything you give above 10 percent many times people will say in our church things like you know I bumped my tithe to 20 percent it's actually not correct because tithe is 10 not 20 so you can't say I'm tithing 20%. You can only tithe 10%. What we really mean is that I've increased my giving to 20%. But you can't say I've increased my tithe to 20%. Anything above 10% is an offering that we offer to the Lord. And you, some of you may be listening like what in the world? How in the world anybody would want to come to church and give 10%? That's already like a killer. And then anything above that consistently, just hold on. Let me give you something more. There's the thing called sacrifice. Or you bumped it to 15 to 20 percent and there are leaders here sitting in this room who give 40 percent every single week every single month and you will not even think that you know and God is blessing their life and God is changing their life but one thing that we challenge as Christians is that once a year once in two years as the Lord leads you and as the Lord prosper you that you begin to make sacrifices to God for some people it's things with money some things with possessions for some people it's the things that you love the things that are precious but that you begin to make sacrifices to God these are valuable and you will begin to see a change in your life. 
do you have to do that no you get to do that amen you know uh me and my wife a few years ago we decided to uh, sell our rental property and we were receiving about $500 from this rental property and this $500 we, we were already giving this $500 every month away so we decided to sell the rental property and to give almost all of the money to the Lord to the local church um, and so my secret thing was that after I sell the rental property I said well I'll drop my giving since to $500 less you know not my tithing but my offering I'll drop it less because I won't have the property to give it from so I'm like you know I'll get out from the obligation of giving and I like the Lord will understand and the Lord would understand except I went to prayer and I felt this prompting when the Lord kind of prompted in my heart and laid in my heart why don't you keep giving as though you have a property and just trust me to make up the difference and I said Lord what if you don't he said well then you go back to give what you can and I decided for a few months I would just go ahead and give what I would give if I still had a property and honestly everything worked out till this day I still do and I don't know where the money comes so this year in the beginning of the year we decided that before the conference comes we will sell our second rental property which gives a lot more money than the first property and secretly I said again to the Lord I said Lord I'm gonna definitely we're gonna take a little decrease in our giving because I'm like I just won't have that money to give and so and plus you will understand and the moment I thought the thought the second thought comes into me if God helped me before what if I take a leap of faith and I just continue the giving without the income and God will help me to find the income I'm only thinking that so I haven't even put the property for sale nothing of that sort and so as the month you know a month ago we decided to put the property for sale and before the property goes for sale I work at the church I get a check from the church on that month and I find out that I get the increase in my salary exactly almost to the dollar of what was supposed to come from the rental property I wept because I'm like last year I took a step of faith and I saw God's faithfulness this year I made a decision and I saw God's faithfulness right away now now let me help those of you for whom is it's hard to swallow that I just mentioned money in the church and I'm a pastor for those of you who believe that you know Christian pastors steal money just like those who people believe that Catholic priests abuse children uh, we, we have stereotypes in our generation about all kinds of people L let me just help you with something okay last year uh, you know I received from our church over 25 or 26 thousand dollars as I worked at the church but at the end of the year you know you get a, a d the deduction from the church a tax deduction you know, of what money you gave and both me and my wife gave back to the church over thirty eight thousand dollars so what I received went back on the top more that's how we live almost every person in the church and so for those of you who think that oh I don't give because I without Audi the Vladimir drives most likely he takes money from the church the real reason you don't give is because you're greedy it has nothing to do with the pastor and I understand some people say well I don't have anything to give you have to understand the person that teaches about this okay I live this every single month I preach this and I live this and because of that we see cars today given by leaders why because they see the same example in me I see the ex same example in my pastor and I see the same example now in our leaders I see that being worked out so I want to encourage you today our greatest desire is not to be known by the cars we drive houses we live or the clothes we wear but by the generosity as Christians that we exemplified in our church Can somebody say amen one of the great benefits and I wanted in conclusion to share why real, really we give that we give like that one of the great benefits of that is the Bible says you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success when you begin to put God first in your finances something happens you don't get success you get prosperity in your way it means in what you do you begin to prosper which brings success into your life many people expect that if you just start you know tithing God's gonna drop money in your pocket that's not really the case God's gonna begins to prosper your way a few years ago this young man that 
is very dear to me in our church and as, for, as long as I could remember he always had financial problems. He just, he worked the hardest that I know. He always had a job but he just never had enough money. And at this particular time, we, me and him, we had a meeting actually with our wives. We had a meeting and he told me that he wanted to give a uh, particular amount of money to a ministry. And I knew that this brother, he didn't have money. So when he said he wanted to give that money to the ministry, I wanted to almost stop him and say, listen, please, that's not wise. You're putting a family in danger. That's, that's your savings. Don't give any savings. And, and I kind of zipped my lip. I was like, you know what, don't rob him from the opportunity of being blessed. So he gave that money to some kind of a ministry. A month later, somebody from the church gives him a very nice car. And people start sending him money from other country. People that he knew from some long ago. And then what happened is I met with him. He comes to, I came to a home group and he said, you won't believe it. He says, I have three paychecks laying on my desk and I don't need to cash them. For the first time in my life, I have a check. I don't need to cash because all my bills are paid for. I saw the change. I saw the change in this man's life. He started to not only give 10%, he started to increase his percentage. And then he started to, every few months, he started to give a sacrifice. For him, sacrifice was different than maybe it's for you. And toward the end of last year, he decided to take a sacrifice, but he didn't have any extra money. He wanted to give a sacrifice to God for God to bless his life. And so what he did is he loved fashion and he loved clothes. And he decided to give his clothes away. But he wanted to give the clothes that he didn't use. They were still in a very good shape. And as he went to his closet, you know, saying, thinking, I'm going to get the clothes that I don't use and just give them away. The Lord says, no, I want you to give only the clothes that are the most important to you. And he told me, he says, I wasn't sure, you know, what was more painful, giving that money or giving the clothes. <laughs> I remember when he came to my house, he brought the clothes to me. And I'm looking at him and I'm like, man, what is our church into? We're like... People are losing their minds, giving all their clothes and everything. But as he was, I'm like, bro, I don't need your clothes. I, I have enough clothes. I don't need. He says, lad, this is not about you. This is about me. He says, I need to be obedient to God. So I'm like, okay, never mind. Go ahead. I'm like, anything else you want to give? I'm open. He gives the clothes. In about a month, God begins to bless the little business that he was, had something going on on the side. Which that business began to take off where sometimes now he makes more money on the side than in his regular job. There was a young man who gave a car last year. He didn't have any money. He just barely had for himself and he gave a vehicle. You know last month that young man who just barely got a vehicle has his own now a dealership here from our church. God said, I will make your way prosperous. Actually, it doesn't say that. It says, you will make your way prosperous. You know what that means? That means you no longer will depend on your way to prosper you. Most people think it's their job's responsibility to make them prosperous. God says it is your responsibility to make your job prosperous. Most of us think just like when I was younger and the opportunity was presented to work at the church and I did not want to work at the church for the reasons because I, I, you know, I knew that if you're going to work at the church you know it's, it's, you're not going to prosper because first of all uh, you know church can't give you the money that you maybe need or you want and secondly if they can it will look back bad in the eyes of the community and so in my mind working at the church and prospering could never go together and the problem had nothing to do with the church was with the mindset and the mindset was this is that if you work for a church or for a company that place is responsible to make you prosperous and then with time God begins to change my mind to say that church is not a church doesn't prosper me church doesn't bless me I have to be a blessing to the church God can prosper you because he is the source of your life not your job as long as you look to your job as your source this is where we're missing the point when we tithe when we give we have the freedom to come to our job to be a blessing to not to come to our job as our God and expect that oh just because I work as a janitor I'll be poor not really 
Just because I flip burgers that means that I won't be prosperous. Just because I drive a truck, just because you know I babysit, just because I work at the church, just because I get a minimum paying job that means I'll never prosper. No, no, no. Your prosperity is not based on your position. It's not based on your boss. It's not based on your company. It is based on God because you made him first in your life. Did somebody say amen? You know a few, a few months ago uh, my wife you know pulled on her work and she works uh, part-time at post office. Part-time on paper, full-time on hours. She pulled in on a Mercedes and one of the managers saw that she was driving a Mercedes and uh, he looked at her he says, whoa how could you afford something like that if you're working at this kind of job? See in his mind it is the job that makes you prosperous. In our world it is God. He just happens to let me work here and then one time when she was picking up her check the same brother manager looked at her he says you better take your check to pay off for that Mercedes of yours she says no offense but that Mercedes is paid for <laughs> don't worry it's from the auction <laughs> the point being is this my prosperity your prosperity does not come from from people it comes from God gives you the right to go to your work and not complain and beg and plead please just raise me a dollar but come like a boss I'm a blessing here I'm gonna be the best employee here that even if you start laying people off you can't afford to lay me off because I'm a blessing to this company I am blessing to this place can somebody say amen amen God wants to make you a blessing he wants to prosper your way your way not someone else's way your way don't ever compete and compare and try to belittle yourself because of what someone else is doing you know just because someone else is not doing that I remember when um, a few years ago I had a friend of mine and he visited me and I lived in a duplex you know we drove uh, you know cars we liked them everything was fine and I didn't see anything wrong with them I mean I was thankful to God that I had a car I was thankful to God that I had my own place to live but if you would come to my duplex the one that I lived in at the outside it didn't have a very appealing look because of the siding it's a little bit outdated and so and this friend of mine is he's a minister he came in and when he met me he asked this word he said you live here with that kind of appearance I said yeah and he said the next thing that really hurt me he said so much for prosperity I was like well welcome <laughs> I was about to say never mind close the door get out of here and he, he came in and and I really just it, it hurt me you know and I knew he, he came on a very nice car he lived in a very nice house and he was doing really good but I was in a different season and when he left you know I had to tell myself listen that man is not gonna make me feel low because he is in his spring and I'm still in my winter I'm gonna live in a dream house I'm gonna drive a nicer car but right now this is where I'm at and my way this way God is prospering it might not look good to you but listen God has brought me to this and I'm gonna be thankful to him you know things change you know this year things has changed but nothing has to change about the fact is you have to choose to prosper in your way I have a lot of my relatives still ask me when are you gonna get a real job because their definition if you don't hold a hammer you don't have a real job because their way is holding a hammer and that's good their way is maybe you know answering the calls and that is awesome but my way is different God will prosper you in your way and you have to be not just proud but you have to be happy with the way that God has set before you and in that way you have to prosper without putting other people down and without exalting yourself about other people can somebody say amen you're gonna prosper in your way your business is gonna prosper some of you you will have a business some of you the job that you are working it's not gonna be that which will determine how successful you will be remove that out of your head you will say well in my job nobody gets promoted listen you are tither you have a God on your side you may be working even as a janitor you're cleaning in the company well you know what you can be a janitor in the company and be blessed better than the CEO of the company 
God wants to bless you in the place that you are in and if he promotes you to be the owner and to be the manager well glory be to him but do not limit and just simply say well if I am in this place I'll never be able to prosper if God could prosper Elijah with ravens and with meat he can prosper you in the place that you are in begin to receive that in your mind as I apply God's word my way will prosper I will have good success are you gonna have good success you're gonna have good success the medical bills that you acquired I really have faith today we're gonna pray against those people who have debt due to medical bills that God is supernatural gonna be, be taking care of them that those people today who maybe you're sitting and you have never been able to own a vehicle debt free that God can do a miracle for those of you you've always lived on rent and this listen this is a great blessing of God but you carry the dream today of owning your own place listen God is gonna help you fulfill that dream for those of you today who maybe you, you're young today you're in high school and you're like you know what I want to finish college nobody ever finished college that we never had money listen and that dream maybe is being killed by the fact that you need to work now so that you can help paying you know for the house that you are living in help the parents and that is good but God wants to make that dream a reality you can receive the breakthrough in your life and go to college for those of you who are doing something on the side and that's something just on the side it's barely taking off but it's really something you love and the work that you do from eight to five is something you don't really like God is able to make that which is on the side to become an international business it was in California on the street somebody was making hamburgers and the guy passed by it was just a little stand hamburger just one guy making hamburgers and one guy went by and he saw how they were making hamburgers really good every day they were the same hamburgers and he decided can I buy this and they said yes and today we know that as McDonald's it was just somebody making hamburgers on the side somebody playing with their phone and making some kind of a software that people can take pictures and it was turned into a one billion dollar God in this day and age can use your life to sponsor God's kingdom he can prosper your way but you got to remove that out of your head that your job is your source God is your source in Jesus name Amen